Well, the bad news is we just did a child murder. Uh, the good news is <laughs> I, I, I kind of think that baby deserved it. Ah, he was a big baby about it. Listen to the silence in here. Isn't it nice and peaceful without all that wailing and screaming and bleeding? So this is one of the elevators I was talking about where... Whoop! There was a child of midnight, a child of moonlight, excuse me, that we couldn't get. And there was another weird thing that looked like a tuft of pubic hair. That's <laughs> also a, that's also a thing we'll have to do later in New Game Plus. Knowing this game, it's the holy pubic hair of the sainted <laughs> one. We need that. It'll be the it'll form like a wonderful little afro on top of our pointy helmet. <laughs> and uh, we just maxed out the stinger, which means that it actually has a bit more verticality to it. Excellent. Oh, all right. See ya. Peace out, homie. My stinger is now as tall as your chair. Be afraid. That's the least violent death we've witnessed so far. <laughs> you're not even wrong there. We didn't have to. You're right. We didn't have to execute that guy by pulling his guts out through his throat. Yet. Only you can prevent forest fires. <laughs> And please, blow out that candle. That's also a fire hazard. I think that might have just been a direct hint from the fella narrating all this about how you need to be upgrading your wax if you want to stand a chance in these late game areas. Because look at this nonsense. Wouldn't it be great if it turned out that the, uh, the secret evil pope behind everything was actually Smokey the Bear? Yeah. <laughs> no, yeah, or like a Scruff McGruff the Crime Hound dog. I'm, d I'm down for this. Like, it's a, like, not oh, in, no, like, even a better. religious sense. Shadow from dead to rights. Yes. Oh, All shit. Right. Did I steal your joke again? I'm that sorry. I don't need to do that. <laughs> I'm just invested in the idea that there's a secret evil pope. Who says he's evil? He's just misunderstood. <laughs> All right, well, just because someone sounds evil doesn't mean that you can judge a book by their dulcet tones. We got to meet the guy first before, you know, we find out if he intends to stab a sword into us or something. So you're saying not to judge a man by the way that he was voice directed. <laughs> yeah, I mean, look at Keanu Reeves. He did great in cyberpunk and bad in everything else he's ever been in. All right, he was okay in Johnny, Johnny Mnemonic. Oh, that's a deep cut. Misericordioso seáis, penitente. Con vuestra aportación, la obra de esta cofradía continúa. And while you're out there, uh, if you found my Blu-ray of John Wick 3, I'd really appreciate it. Podemos evitar este destino que se nos impone desde las altas voluntades. Italian Spanish dub. Juan Wick. Well, uh... We're going to check out the Arch Cathedral rooftops for a bit. Um, there's, uh, you know, th there's not a lot that we can do at the moment. And another good chunk of stuff that, uh, you know, we're only going to do in New Game Plus. It's good to poke our heads in, though, or poke their heads with our sword, as it were, because it teaches us what it will be like when we come back. Yeah, that that is still... Uh, the winged face, I think it's, I think it's called. All right, hang on. It's called a winged face, but there are so many faces attached to it. Does that mean there's like a dominant face? Oh, you neutered that dog. Cloistered Sapphire works on Armaguras as well. This is also another great place to show off the Cloistered Sapphire. Another great place to show off parallax scrolling technology. Oh, yes. But welcome to Anor Anor Londo. Look at this place. I mean, even this place is destroyed and crumbling. Like, you got past the giant wall separating the chaff from the holy, and even the holy city is all kinds of messed up. So, this is the elevator that'll take us to the end game. 
Uh, right now, we only have two of the masks. But uh, once we get the third, we'll be able to take the elevator all the way up. Oh! Oh, I see. We need to beat the... Wait, wait. We need to beat the three major mini bosses so that we can go yep. and confront Ridley. Exactly. Yep. You were not joking about that various suit thing. <laughs> we might even see Penitent Ridley. It's just the same guy, but he's got nails in his hands. Yeah, exactly. So what? Hey, this is an elevator. Did they know that you would have to kill three of the most powerful ascendant beings on Custodia in order to activate it and use it? Oh, no, that was something the Miracle added, like, the night before he did his Game Master campaign. All right, that's yeah. That's actually uh, an, that's okay. an interesting way that I can think of, you know, an interpretation of the Miracle, assuming it is a being of some sort, is that it's, like, a really annoyed uh, Dungeons & Dragons Game Master who has a plan <laughs> spread out, but he... <laughs> But you know he he's just really pissed off that all of the all of the players that came by are improvising. He's just upset with our he's he is upset with our character choosing to fight everything he comes across, and he's like, yes. "No, I put so much lore into this ancient historical world. He's trying to railroad us, the miracle." So you're telling me he's the anti Matt Mercer? Yeah. Yeah. Instead of critical role, this is more like critically pissed off role. <laughs> You're saying this isn't a campaign of love and friendship? No, definitely not. No, sir. I like that you traveled all the way up a very convenient elevator, and now you have to travel all the way down a decrepit elevator shaft. Thanks, game. Swings and roundabouts, right? Like, you could have gotten off of that elevator rules. on any floor. Mm hmm. This is not like Spec Ops The Line, where it's a continuous journey down, even when it makes no geographical sense. It could be, though. It could... We don't know how much of this is due to our dwindling sanity and increasing religious faith. What if the miracle is affecting our mind? <laughs> I Well, that's the problem. Everyone here is crazy. And then the, the effect just sort of null nullifies itself. I guess that's true. We just need our guy to get nailed with a Coke bottle in the head, and then he'll be like, the gods must be crazy, and it turns into like a it, it turns into like a comedy that's also a commentary on society. Now, I got that reference, but I'm curious as to how many of our viewers will. <laughs> I had to watch it in school, so I'm going to imagine that... Uh... At least a few people have seen it. I haven't seen it, but at least a few people have seen it. It would be like the Heineken bottle in Dark Souls 2 if something like that were to appear in this game. Doritos and Mountain Dew in Metal Gear Solid. Oh, but that's the best drop in Metal Gear Solid. Come on now. <laughs> You're so right. <laughs> You're so right it is, though, because they're historical. They're historical Doritos. What, what, were, what would be the historical Doritos of Custodia? They were eating chips back in the day, I guarantee it. Chips have been around as long as man's been around. We got a jumbo family bag of Eucharist for communion. <laughs> <laughs> Once you pop the body of Christ, you can't stop. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good. That's really good. Oh, yeah. gee oh Jesus, these Pringles are good. Thank you, my child. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus, this is some good parallax. Look at that. Oh, my God. Without spoiling anything, the next couple of seconds, it'll be an even better silhouette. I love that all the way in the background, you can see the mountain where we started this nightmare, what, nine videos ago? Man. Hey, remember the Warden of the <laughs> Silent Sorrow? Now there's two of them. Oh! The Twin Dragon Riders! <laughs> exactly, yes. And oh, I am see. so glad that I was able to get this particular composition, which you'll you'll see in a couple seconds here. Although these guys are a bit weird, are, are a bit weaker because uh, you know there aren't any bodies that they can fling around. I'm so glad I got that them in this exact position. They're interpretive dancing. God, that's beautiful.
This entire game is haunting. And every once in a while, it just pulls out something like that beautiful vista, and you just have to stop for a second and take it in, and it's gorgeous. Say hello to the lunatic. It's fascinating, hello. isn't it? Like, how the game has these traversal segments that look like traditional levels of a Castlevania-type game, and then occasionally it'll bust out a unique set piece or vista that isn't really anywhere else, and... You know, like that giant bell, for example. And you just kind of have to, you just kind of have to admire it for a second because what, the direction that it must take to decide when to place those things. It takes an expert touch and oh. oh so this you. area that we're in is the wall of the holy prohibitions. It is the, uh, the sanitarium slash jail of uh, of Custodia. It has one of those. Yeah, basically there are there are crimes that are too grave even for the uh, the religious people of Custodia. Well, I was gonna say like there are crimes that they keep people alive after committing in this place. I would think they just kill anyone who commits any crime here. <laughs> I guess they just let the lunatics run the asylum. Yeah. So there are three different keys. Uh, you only need two of them to advance the story, but a lot of content is hidden behind that third key. I hate areas <laughs> like this. I hate them. This is this is a Silent Hill game all of a sudden. Shit gets rusty. All doors are locked. Like I can never keep track of areas hey, that get are in complex there? like this. So we've been seeing lots of specific level design themes throughout this area, like, uh, you know, sleepy canvases and library litigated words. We're all about, you know, non our lateral thinking puzzle solving. Uh, whereas Mother of Mothers was about, you know, difficult platforming and dealing with tougher enemies. This one is all about keys and doors. Uh, this one's going to make us feel like we're going mad by the end of it. We're actually not going to spend that much time in here because, again, a lot of the stuff, a lot of the, the meteor stuff in this area is hidden behind the third key, which I can't remember the name of, but there there's bronze, silver and gold. And the gold key is where, you know, a, a number of the big rewards are. But I got to save that for New Game Plus. We got to go back a couple of videos and talk to that fellow who was wearing a beard of keys. He ought to have at least one that could open this up for us. What kind of clown car are they keeping these lunatics in? They keep popping up. Well, you are opening up all of the cells, basically. You're just letting them run through the halls screaming, and good for you? Like, I'm glad. Because it looks like they've been locked up here for a while. Their posture is pretty familiar. Mm -hmm. Oh, excuse me, it's not silver, it's iron. I mean, it would have to be something Ooh. that's not, like ornamental or opulent in any way because it's custodia so like it's got to be something that like looks shiny on the outside it's a veneer of shine but on the inside it's just garbage poop yeah exactly you open up the all present the, and inside is a flaming turd that's custodia all of the actual opulence reserved for the church yeah so this guy is a lion heart uh he's basically a reskin of the garda infante but there is no there is no girl riding him, which may be a good or a bad thing depending. That guy is not a lion heart. That guy is a lion hat. <laughs> well, that's what that's what his friends call him. Ah, I see. Someone was a Twin Peaks fan. This is also where the other, the, the last of the, the three area bosses in, in the second half is. And this is the, I mentioned before that Viridiana can only help us with two of the three bosses in this part. And this is that other third boss that she can't help with. And it will become obvious when, once we get to it as to why that is. Sometimes you got to fight your own battles, Penitent One. Sometimes. Mm-hmm. Good lord! Ooh. I mean, 
You just compromised the structural integrity of that man. You atomized him with your sword. <laughs> Look at all those taunting golden doors. I bet that's gonna be like... Oh! <laughs> it's gonna be like what, C. Jacobs? Uh, you know what? Never mind. We'll find a red key and then we'll be able to get into any door we want, I guess. <laughs> The Penitent oh, here One is go. contracting every possible STI from these executions. Just take another shower, why not? Oh yeah. Oh, that's brutal! You know, he did that at the beginning of the game. It's been a while, so the blood's probably drying. He just needs to do it again. Yeah, he's got he's got to refill his Juicero. <laughs> so they're like, K, they're like human K-cups to him. He just smashes the blood and they just... <laughs> got it. It's all compatible with his mask based on the form and shape. Got it. Unfortunately, it's also copy protected for some reason. That's okay, because I saw the others and, like, their poor imitations. The giant pile of naked penitent men. So this is why Veridiana can't help us on this boss fight, because otherwise it would ruin the jump scare. This just keeps happening to you. Yeah. This guy! I mean, if uh, if the penitent one was able to speak, he would definitely say, you may be wondering how I got myself in this situation. <laughs> so this is Kirsa, returned by the flames. And uh, unlike the other bosses, he actually does get a very specific backstory to him. He's also, I wouldn't say he's easy, but he's definitely not as hard as Exposito or Melchiades. say we've heard of this guy before uh and, and didn't know he had so many health bars yeah. i would say his patterns are easier to learn and once you once you understand him he's definitely much uh, a much easier boss than the other two in the you know the second half of the game this is this is like a mega man boss fight i mean the camera's not even moving around can you yeah pretty much can you wall jump can when can you Shoryuken? I guess that's your stinger, isn't it? Stinger him with your Shoryuken! Yeah, that, that's a new game plus six. You gotta <laughs> collect all the armor from, like, Dr. Light, who in this yep. case is literally God. <laughs> so this fella just decided one day to become a fire elemental. It seems like it worked out for him. We will actually be learning his backstory in this very video even. Deo Gracias is gonna tell us what his deal is, which uh, that's unusually generous for this game. That guy really gets around. Yeah. And then he returns to get some more. The flames help him do that. I. Now again, the whole sticking to the ceiling thing like a bug I wish that we could do that. You see, it's not the flames that are letting him do that. It's his fingernails. He's probably been in jail for a while. Also, the game never really tells you that you can parry Kirsa's charges. I think it was trying to teach you about that uh, with the lunatics. But then again, with the lunatics, it never teaches you that you can parry him either. See, I try to parry every attack in games where you can parry at least once. So like, I would have at least given it an attempt, but like, it's a boss fight. So how would you assume you could parry anything he does? Yeah, and also the game's been, the game has you know been slowly oh, teaching oh. you that only like melee attacks could be parried. Because you you cannot, uh, for example, when he throws his sword at you with the flaming the the flaming circle there, you can't parry that. You know what you can parry though? You can parry his blood straight out of his flesh. It's going quite well for you. Chunk by chunk, little by little. It's like chopping down a tree. So this is the real story of what happened to George Washington as a boy. <laughs> Whoa, so it's like an Evil Dead kind of thing, where it was like a traumatic memory he would, he would rather forget. I cannot tell a lie. This shit is fucked up. That, I, there's no shortage of traumatic memories in this town, <laughs> in case you haven't noticed. Yeah, they tend to follow us, don't they? I was so happy that I was able to end that fight with a stinger. It looks so cool. Oh. 
And we still have about four or five minutes left of the video to go. And that is in large part because we're actually going to get the story about what this guy's deal is. You know, like the end of every Beauty and the Beast fight in Metal Gear Solid 4. Ah, Dio Gracias Drebin. I see. Mm -hmm. I see the comparison now. Aquel fue injustamente condenado a la hoguera por herejía. Now why did you do this during the other five boss fights? Testigos de cómo las llamas consumieron enteramente su cuerpo. He was just in the area, thought he'd stop by. That last one was a giant baby. It's better if you don't know. <laughs> I hope you avoided that circle on the ground. You know, he, his mother taught him how to one-hit kill any penitent one who crosses his path. Y de ellas, de las cenizas y el carbón, el cuerpo de... I still don't know what, what the deal was with that weird flying lady, though. I thought she was supposed to be dead. son los caminos del milagro. Sometimes the miracle is, like, way literal, dude. And it's like, oh, okay, I mean... I kind of assumed as much. Being reborn in holy fire and all of that being literally reborn in literal holy fire. I don't know, man. I feel like the miracle doesn't quite have much subtlety to it, does it? But notice that that guy was still in prison after being reborn yeah. by the miracle with ultimate Mega Man fiery tornado powers. So what the fuck does that mean for Custodia? You know how some people, you put them in jail long enough, they just can't adapt to society? He just decided to stick around. You know what? I, maybe this is a better place for him than, like, the Library of Forbidden Books. Yeah. Because that would... that The Library of Forbidden Books is not a place for a rehabilitated man like him to, to, to have a job. It's uh, <clears throat> like a tinderbox waiting to happen. But what if we turned him into a book? What the, all right, all right, hang on a minute. That is kind of what happened with the canvases. I had not assumed that the books, too, could be the, the remnants of people. Custodia is capable of some crazy shit with its magic. You can fire laser beams from your sword just because some lady willed it hard enough. Oh, I'm sure you want to see this again. Oh, my favorite. Again, at least he's not going to go thirsty. <laughs> I think that might be worth a magic bar to do that. Yeah, well, uh, we're just going to finish up here. This last bit, that was the ed that was the exit all along, but uh, they were pretty sneaky about the, the lock to this place. I do like how it led us in a mostly linear path. It wasn't as bad as I was imagining. Not as yeah, labyrinthine like, like I said, a lot as they of the could have stuff, yeah, a, yeah. A lot of the optional stuff is tied to that extra key we don't have, which, again, New Game Plus, that, that's, when we'll, that's when we'll tackle that. Like that door over there, that's a gold key. Oh, sure, but I like that the critical path was one that you couldn't really get lost on. Every door that let us in let us back out into the light. It made sense, yeah. Yeah, same thing with... Uh, uh, with the sleepy canvases as well. If you know what you're doing, you just, it takes about, you know, 45 seconds to a minute to go straight to Exposito if you don't want to do anything else. Is that Dio Gracias' his other name because he exposits toward you about all the bosses? Or, or, or is that that I'll, fancy... I'll accept that as the joke, that, but Exposito is the wicker baby. Or is that that, like, fancy meme dance where like you think the song is like all innocent but it's actually really dirty you know exposito <laughs> <laughs> oh, see I, I was gonna go with louis louis which uh nobody knows the words to that wait, wait that was in rabbits go home remember that that song and i i did a whole spiel about how it was supposedly extremely naughty but but it was event the case was thrown out because no one could understand the lyrics yes oh my god i remember that yeah that the, the soundtrack in rabbits go home was really weird it's like someone's memories of like the 60s up until the 80s and then it was put into a 2009 game very strange and then it was translated into spanish and then back and my god and then and then into rabid i just i just can't wait for the parts where the rabbits start gregorian chanting <laughs> 
close. Close. You know, I was going to make a joke that one of the secret bosses in, in New Game Plus was a rabid, but I wasn't entirely sure whether I could do it convincingly. <laughs> See, all, all, of the, all of the games that I have Let's Played are secretly in the same cinematic universe. So eventually, like the crossover DLC, that's actually with Epic Mickey. And then we'll find the, the two brothers somewhere. Uh, the, the ninja from Ninja Blade, Cole from Gun, obviously will make an appearance. All right, and, I looked it, it up. Will still, it will still make more sense than Endgame. <laughs> All right, I looked it up. The rabbit is only in the Wii port of Blasphemous. God damn it. Ah! You mean I have to buy another copy? Uh, unfortunate. Well, time to go to Amazon. <laughs>